<laughs> right. But what I am permitted to do uh, is to give reasonably fulsome introductions to three friends, and uh, like all of you are friends, even if we don't know each other personally, but three friends who have known each other for a very long time. And uh, so it's wonderful to have uh, Joyati back again, Vrinda, who never ever leaves, and Nivi, uh, <laughs> and Nivi, who is um, Nivedita Menon, who is actually the host uh, of every JNU event. So let me brief. <laughs> So let me um, briefly, um, um, uh, but I think deeply, uh, introduce to you our panelists, for those of you, and I hope there are lots of new students here. Uh, so Joyati Ghosh had taught economics at Jawaharlal Nehru University for nearly 35 years. And since January 2021, uh, she has been professor of economics at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. She's the author or the editor of scores of books and some scholarly articles, and she is also the recipient of several international prizes that recognize her distinguished contribution to the social sciences. She also writes regularly for popular media, media including newspapers, journals, and blogs. She was the executive secretary of the Ideas Associates, which is the International Development Economics Associates, um, um, uh, uh, which is an international network of uh, heterodox development econ economists from 2002 to 2021. So she doesn't leave things undone. Uh, she has advised uh, several states and national governments and consulted for various um, international organizations, including I. LO, UNDP, and UN Women. Most recently in 2022, she was appointed to the UN Secretary General's High Level Advisory Board on Effective Multilateralism, which is mandated to provide a vision for international cooperation to deal with current and future challenges. So from those of us who have known her at least part of those 35 years, um, JNU, we think, I think, that it is wonderful that the UN Secretary General will benefit from <laughs> Joyati's excellent multitasking skills and extraordinary efficiency, but also from her warm, friendly, but always incisive criticism. Because perhaps there is no other economist who will become, begin an untired lecture with the question, mainstream economics, why do I not love thee? <laughs> <laughs> so Brinda Grover, our second guest, uh, the one who never leaves, has been uh, practicing as an independent lawyer at the Supreme Court of India, the High Courts and the Trial Courts since 1989. One of the most prominent human rights lawyers um, in the country, Brinda obtained a law degree from Delhi University and a master's in law from New York University. In her long and illustrious career, Brinda has contributed to the drafting of laws to protect women and children from domestic violence and sexual violence, besides advocating for laws prohibiting torture and legislation for protection against communal and targeted violence. In the courts, she has appeared in prominent human rights cases and represented women and child survivors of domestic and sexual violence, victims and survivors of communal massacres, extrajudicial killings and custodial tortures, sexual minorities, trade unions and political activists, and journalists, and we can, I think there is perhaps, everybody most probably knows somebody um, whom Brinda has represented. Her research and writing, and she writes regularly in the media and in law journals, is to inquire into the role of law in the subordination of women, the effect of these so-called security laws on human rights, specifically those of women, undocumented workers, internally displaced persons, and those who have either been tortured or intentionally disappeared. At the level of policy, she is also actively engaged with UN human rights mechanism, including the Universal Periodic Review and the UN Special Reporters. But above all, and I say this from the depth of my heart, that Rinda has been the staunchest ally of the little quests of justice that do not 
make it to the courts and law. And her role in supporting particularly women rights women in their homes and their workplaces in this very university uh, across the country is just, I mean, it has never, can never be acknowledged enough. In fact, on any WhatsApp group, um, most discussions on such events or incidents inevitably end with the conclusion, let's ask Vrinda. And a decision that is, when people make this decision, it's with the full confidence that Vrinda will always be available to be asked and will be always ready to help and scold. Finally, Nivedita Menon is professor at the Center for Comparative Politics and Political Theory at the School of International Studies. Again, a very iconic scholar. She is apart from research papers in Indian and international journals, as well as edited books. She is the author of, and who would ever say this about an, a book written by an academic, the best selling, <laughs> a seeing like a feminist, uh, uh, which is 2012, and I think has been translated into what? How many languages? Four. Just four, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Recovering Subversion was an uh, earlier book from 2004. Feminist Politics Beyond the Law, and they are uh, actually very well seated next to each, right next to each other. So the law and the beyond the lawyer, and uh, Power and Con Contestation, which is India after 1989, um, which is co-written with Aditya Nigam. Nimi is also a regular commentator on contemporary issues on this collective blog, uh, Kafila Online, which many of you would see. She's one of the founders and is active in democratic politi uh, politics in India on a range of issues. She is also a translator of fiction and non-fiction from Indian Malayalam into English and from Malayalam into Hindi and has received the A.K. Ramanujan Award for translation. Nibi's iconic status as India's leading feminist thinker often masks what all of her students and friends admire Nibi the most for, the fearless independence of her thought and her relentless engagement with different kinds of views. Uh, it is from Nibi that I think many of us have learned that it is not enough to hold an opinion. That opinion must be stated it must be defended and it can be changed. In her reminders that the job of academics and of the university is to strive towards a world in which all the hierarchies that divide us are erased forever. Nivi is simply an inspiration. So welcome Nivi <laughs> as the host. Okay, so without uh, further ado, uh, the format is this and we know that there will be a lot of questions. Uh, so I do not intend to speak uh, very much uh, in terms of questions, but we actually do want to make it a discussion. So um, questions might be directed as in, at each individual, um, but others will have a little time to um, uh, chip it. Uh, all 